Welcome back to the finishing line in association with Bedabin.com. For all the latest odds from the world leading bookmakers, head over to Bedabin.com. Right, so we're going to concentrate on Sandown this weekend and a few others that we might fancy run over the weekend. So... I laugh at you. I've just told him I have the biggest certainty of the week. I really need to know of, of, the, of the week of the year, and I put my phone here so we can't see my notes on it because I'm keeping them in suspense now. So um, it's really annoying me. I have to know now. And now my phone has gone off. So there we go. Right. No, no, we'll do that. The, we'll get to the bet of the week and kind of scared. It. <laughs> okay. It's a bit left field. Put it that way. Hasn't got four legs. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, all right, let's get on. Sand down. Two twenty-five. While I try to think what this is. Two twenty-five. Yeah. Uh, now, a lot of the the two main races at Sandown in <laughs> the weekend, <laughs> they depend on where surname runs. Uh, this would actually be my second best bet of the week at the minute. Now, is sir? I think surname will run in this. I think it's good ground. It is. I I think he would want soft ground for two miles to take on anti or is kind of what Nick was just saying. Um, I, I don't see any reason. It's not going to be good ground from the forecast and whatnot. Two mile five, he's been running over this. Is two mile six, right handed. Looks tailor made for him. Janica's second favorite. Lads, keep Janica. You keep the rest. Of them. Surname surname is is turning out to be a proper horse. Now whether he wants. Whether he, he wants to go left-handed or not, I don't know. But he's coming here, he's had a little bit of a break. Um, even money went definitely red as the, as, as the third favourite, 7-2. Even money's a steal. Fill your boots. He's on time with everyone as I mean, Paddy Power obviously taking the edge that he might not run here. He might go and run against Altio, but I can't see it at all. He's... Declarations are tomorrow morning now, so... Are they tomorrow morning? Yeah. No. Sure. Friday. Oh, it's a grade two. Yeah. Okay. So it's a grade two. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, you'll have it tomorrow morning because <coughs> the celebration just to chase Celebration to chase is a great one. So those decks will be out tomorrow morning. I think it, I, I think you're, put it this way, I think you're betting on him to run here. So like, as in, if he turns up, I think he's a, he's a one to two, one to three chance. He'll yeah, if he's declared for this, he's one to two. Yeah. So you're betting on whether he'll run or not, I think. Yeah. Um, I think you'd run, and I think have you learned your lesson about anti post yet? Yeah, I know. Two down, how was a mistake? Hands up, got it wrong. Shouldn't have backed him. Shouldn't I wouldn't have backed him. Still annoyed about that, but anyway, still looking forward to the guineas. And um, yeah, I think surname. You're betting on him to run if he turns up here. Janica and definitely red black court and Charbel. Charbel, you can Corbin you can keep them. This horse has proved to be a lot better than those. If he doesn't turn up, I'd back Cobra than I. But well, I wouldn't back. I'm not backing Atten in this. But if he didn't turn up, I fancy Cobra than I. That's a bit. But if Surname turns up, there's nothing beating him playing this. I'm gonna have a double later on Surname and my bet of the day. Bet of the week. It's hardly Altio, is it? No, it's not Altio. So anyway, that brings us on to Altio. It's it Celebration does. Chase. Altio wins. Woo! Go on, Altio. Altio wins, doesn't he? Yeah. Um How? How is our name still rated higher than? I know. It's ridiculous. BHA, get your finger out, will you? Yeah. Cock the hell on. Yeah, it's a shocker, really. Look at that. 1 1 1 1 1 1 1. Surname 4 3 7 1 1. He's the highest rated chaser because he won twice in a row. Yeah. A horse has never been beat over fences or hurdles. It's a stop. Yeah. Not the lights. No, Alt Altio wins this yeah. uh, in my book. I think the track suits him. I think the uphill finish suits him. Yeah. Because it drags out that extra bit of stamina. I love the way he takes the piss out of people. Yeah. Yeah. He gets done, he gets done for a bit of pace, but he, he stays on well. So a strong run two mile over that trip will, will suit him down to the ground. And, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't like him seeing him make his own run in it. I look, to be honest, I can think he, do, he can do whatever he wants. But he gets, he, he's like a psychopath out in front. He just goes, ah, oh, I'll jump left, I'll jump right, let's make this fun. <laughs> Gino Trail is in it, so he'd probably go off like the Clappers. Um, Diego de Charmel, he gets my vote. God's Best 365 Gold Cup? Yeah. Any opinion on this? Talk is cheap. For some reason. Uh, he ran in the handicap at Kempton the last day, and I think everything happened a bit too quick for him. He was very inexperienced. And I think the 
Ele Stantrum himself and I got drawn to Yella Enki as well one of your old favourites yeah Yella Enki down there um, I think if he gets in a rhythm down the back he ran well in the Gold Cup that lad I just the only thing the only reason he wasn't my selection in this actually is uh, the ground mm. I think he probably wanted a bit of softer ground um, he's got he's only had a couple of runs on better ground so maybe not maybe you shouldn't put a line for him just yet but it, like he, he's got a chance of 16 to soft ground he'd be my selection in this my uh, selection is don't say give me a copper no giving up on him after last day although I do think this will suit him better than Cheltenham I do think it'll suit him better than Cheltenham but Ooh, I don't know he just disappointed me in Cheltenham he, he didn't travel or anything he didn't do anything for me um, piggy was Again, I don't have a strong opinion in this race now. I, I just, when I looked at the head of the market... I it's eight to one the favourite. Like. Yeah, I wasn't impressed with Talk is Cheap last day. No, I didn't kind of forgive him, though. He was, he looked like a promising horse in his first few chases. Mm. Yeah, I don't know, he disappointed me. He did disappoint the last day. Step back was pulled up the last day as well. So I just took a little, little look down. Yalanki at 16 would be my second pick. If the ground was softer he'd probably be my yeah. definite pick um a horse there an old horse now called la um was i nearly third got in this nearly yeah third in this in 2015 mm. going back four years um he's been in good form this year he's had two wins including in one of those um i think Fair it's uh, yeah I'll yeah you know. uh, it was either the veterans or it was one of those grand military Races. So you rode him. Sandown. Told you so. I yeah. think it was the yeah. military. Yeah, yeah, one of the military races around Sandown. Around Sandown, you know he stays. Um, he's been in good form. He's off one hundred and thirty-two. He's off one hundred and forty something. Back at his best. Um, he only got beat the last day. He got beat up at Kelso. He's fourth of eight, being five lengths. But you know. It's not like if you look at the horses and like get away mm. Trump and those that Nichols brought up to Kelso, like it, it, you can get beat up there handy yeah. enough. It's a it's a track that I wouldn't I wouldn't be worried if they got beat up there, you know. And he's very good farmer under. Oh, what's that? Yeah, he has. He's good farmer around Sandown. Look, he's twenty to one. Yeah. Not a strong opinion on the race, to be honest. It's I find this harder to find a winner of this than you would the Grand National. Probably because you just back Tiger up. <laughs> on the road there's um, one I was looking at as well at a bigger big price 33.51 get on the Jaeger he's only had to have a few runs for Dan Skelton his hearts are absolutely flying it's going to be you next week in Punchestown isn't yeah, it yeah um, well it is <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh, this we're doing a live a live preview sorry, as well sorry I'd like to correct Andrew I there am, is no we involved in any of this live preview <laughs> <laughs> he's getting out of this I'll be in here Working and then off to the guineas. We're ho <laughs> hoping that we behave ourselves on it. But it'll be fun. We're doing it. Can uh, you drop the we? We, sorry, <laughs> sorry. You and Dave. You me and Dave. And Dave to be fair. Me yeah. and Dave will be doing it on the way up in the car and then the morning after. Maybe the night if we're still alive. So have it on Facebook anyway. It should be right crack. Have a look at us. Well, oh, it might that. be might be the last time you see us. Anyway, there we go. Uh, you see, I as as I've said now, I've gone over to Guineas uh, in Newmarket. I'm really looking forward to that. We might have a bit of uh, behind the scenes previews. I just said you're going to beat me, would you? <sighs> Sorry, pal. It's not that kind of weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, heart broke. <laughs> yeah, we might. We I might be able to get some behind the scenes. Interviews and a little preview over there with a, a new market based trainer. So, going totally racing UK now, aren't you? Why? Have a crack, have a laugh. Behind the scenes. Make a fool of yourself. Yeah. Right. We'll start calling you Matt, will we? <laughs> oh, I'm better than him. <laughs> Matt 2.0. Matt 2.0. Less hand. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. It's going to be our first kind of. Andrew's wanted to do it for a while, haven't you? And yeah. And we've got another one already lined up for later in the season. Um, a behind the scenes little tour so it's all going to lead up to the big Chetland Festival preview that big venue somewhere like out there 
big venue like our office. Yeah, we can fit about 10 people. I know. <laughs> no, I was saying we was going to start out something. Did he? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. That worries me. <laughs> that really does worry me. <laughs> That's worse than me organising something. Yeah. Um, right, back to this. Back to the weekend. Uh, the select hurdle. One more sand down. I have no opinion on this. I think on the blind side of win this. It's between on the blind side and black up of last year. Yeah, a lot of dodgy form in that race. Your friend's horse is run. It is, yeah. Including the bit fair hurdle form. Any, Probably why he wants soft ground that was. Any inside info for us? No, nothing at all. Um, Probably just want soft ground. I think they're coming here hoping that there might be a small field and they pick up some prize money. Um, That's going to cut up some. They like him. They think he's improved since the better heard it. So yeah. So um, we we'll see. But yeah, soft ground is probably what, what he wants. But yeah, if there's less than ten runners, then why not? It looks like there will be. They probably pick up some prize money. Good day out. Good day out. Stand down for the for the racing club. Right, um, anything else that you want? Get to this bloody thing, will you, please? Right, hang on, we've got, some, uh, we've got Navin on Sunday. Yeah, Capri is running, who cares? <laughs> the vintage <laughs> crop stakes. Um, be interesting to see who runs in this now. Um, Q Gardens, 7th in the arc last year, had been very good over, over longer distances. Capri, they've said they're going to aim as their cup boss this year. Um, he's got loads of ability if they can keep him right. And Southern France, he was back to the boards for the Cesarovich. Yeah. He went off four to one, he came seventh in that. Um, look, a lot of these early season races, you kind of just have to take a watch and breathe. Aidan O'Brien, though, has to be said, is in unbelievable form. Seven out of 18 in the last 14 days, 39% strike rate. And interestingly, his first two juvenile runners have oh. both won, which normally they take a run and normally like they don't, first few they don't, usually get they don't mind them coming second because mm. it gives them that bit of experience um, I would imagine they're probably well above standard yeah. but um, interesting to see there they've both won he's in flying form um, Salsa Bill Stakes the listed race for Phillies mm. this is an, a horse I'm really interested in uh, it's a one mile two listed race um, as we say for Phillies a horse called Sol- Solange or Solage. Solage. Solage? S-O-L-A-G-E. Solage. Solange. Solange. I was thinking that, like Destiny's Child, is it Solange? Is that one of them? It's her sister. It's, yeah, it's her sister, yeah. 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 Beyonce's sister. Yeah. Now it's not Beyonce. What the hell is going yeah. on? <laughs> We're on to Beyonce. It's, I did think that though. I was like, Solange. Where's this on? No. Solage. Navin on Sunday, right? Um, this horse has an interesting backstory to it, right? It's by Galileo. Right. Uh, the dam is a half sister to a one mile four group one winner, right? She was owned, this filly was bought for 700 grand as a yearling. Um, so was 700 grand? 700 grand, right? Mother it gets God. better. Was owned by a guy called Juiced out in. I, Juiced? I, I want to say. <laughs> I, no, no, that's his second name. I think oh, it's Justin great. or something like that. Anyway, he's a South African businessman. He's got wrapped up in other tax problems. So he's had to sell a load of his horses. He's those black and green. Oh, the yeah. With Mike Cock out there. Yeah, yeah. So he's had to sell a load of his horses. So this filly went to the sales in France and was sold to Bally Lynch Stud in Ireland for a million. She'd had one run. She was second in a maiden in France for Clem, your man Clement. And she was bought then for a million the back end of last year and was sent to Jim Bolger. She then bolted up by four and a half lengths in a one mile, one and a half maiden at Goran. Uh, that was on soft ground, so that maybe is the only question mark, but it's too early to say that she won't go on good ground. And if he runs her then, I presume he thinks she will. Um, tough to know what she beat that day, but all the, all the decent yards were, were represented. Yeah. Derek Weldon was a second, Joe Lyons horse third, and I think Aidan O'Brien was fourth. John Ox. John Ox. Fifth, Jessica Jesse Hammond. was Jesse was sixth. So I'd say the form it's of that is probably a bad. decent maiden. Yeah, um, look, it's hard to say. They're three year olds turning up for most of them having their first run of the season. You know she's fit though. That was only how many fourteen days, six, nineteen days ago. Not that long ago. Yeah. yeah, it was only nineteen days ago. Um, she's one that I like, and I'll be keeping them. Not even nineteen days ago. Yeah, keeping a really close eye on her. Um, yeah, I remember watching her. 
Yeah, I hope she, she runs. Her. Her. Yeah, I hope she runs here because I do. I like her. Have you anything else? No, think? I just want to know what this thing I just is. Just want to know what this thing is. Right. So, there's a race on Sunday morning. Right. In London, called the London Marathon. Oh Jesus! Right. I, <laughs> I honestly, I told you, I, I'm a keen fan of. Of athletics. I'm a keen competitor. <laughs> I'm a keen fan of athletics and especially marathons. And there's a runner called Eliud Eliud Kipchoge, right? Eliud Kipchoge, even, right? Sounds like the winner. He's unbelievable. He's absolutely unbelievable. There's a, before I even go on about him, there's a Nike documentary out there. Um, it's called Breaking Two. Go and watch it. It's absolutely fantastic. They try and break the two-hour barrier. For um, for a marathon, they do it around Monza. Um, oh, I've seen that uh, car racing track, right? And they make now look, they make everything as perfect as it can be. The reason it wouldn't be um, it, it wouldn't be a an official record is because you can't have people join a race halfway through. Yeah. They have to start, so the pacemakers have to start the race. And with this, they run a few laps. They bring new pacemakers in and they keep changing them to make it easy for easier for him. Um, he fails by a few seconds. Go and watch it. It's it, mm. it's, it's close. Uh, he fails by about twenty seconds. His record, right? He's at eleven runs in marathons. He's won ten of them. He's lost once. He came second on this on on only his second ever marathon start to a guy who broke the world record on that day. Okay. Uh, Wilson Kipsa, right? Um, his average time for a marathon is 2.04. Mo Farah is his biggest competitor and rival in this, and then it's kind of tell you a price about the rest of them, okay? So Mo Farah was third in this last year behind uh, El Kipchoge. He's already won three London marathons, this guy, the only three that he's competed in. Right. This is going for his fourth London marathon. He's in absolutely flying form. His last run was, he broke the world, he broke the world record, right, in Berlin in September 2008, 2.01.39. The last right? fast. He, he, smashed, he smashed over a minute off the previous record, a minute and 18 seconds, right? If anything, it just looks as if he's getting better by his times. He always targets London. He's, as I say, he's won here three times. He's won in 2.04.42, 2.03.05. 20417, right? Mm. This guy goes around and it's like it's like watching Frankel or something. Because he's just he's jogging next to them. It just looks like he's doing a half speed. Farah was third in this to him in 20622 last year, which was over two minutes behind him. Farah has then come out and won in Chicago in 20511, right? The, this is to be expected. Farah's coming off the track. It takes a while to get used to marathon running. It's it's quite different, obviously, from the track. So his time is going to improve. He has got to go and improve by another minute. That's not happening. To get close to Kipchoge. If Kipchoge only runs averagely, he's, Farah has got to improve a minute to get next to him. Right? And a minute is a lot. It might not sound like a lot, but it's a lot. It's a lot in American. Mo Farah's never been ranked in it yet. He was ranked sixth for three weeks. He's ranked seventh in in the world in marathons. Kipchoge is just the world best. Um, what has also caught my eye about Mo Farah at the minute is he said he might, he said he's quit the track and he's a marathon runner. He's now saying he's tempted to go back to the track for the 10,000 meters at Tokyo in 2020. That doesn't sound like, to me like That's someone confidence. who's focused on marathons and sees themselves as a marathon runner for the next 10 years. It sounds like he's got his eye kind of on that. And if you remember how Mo Farah used to run, he used to drop out the back, 5,000, 10,000 meter races, he used to drop out the back and he had a kick. Yeah. Kipchoge has the same kick, but in marathon pace. He didn't, Farah never looked like someone who would stay and stay and stay. Um, I'm just a massive fan of Kipchoge. I think he's a freak. He's an absolute freak of a man. Um, It'll take a massive, massive effort from anyone to break that 201.39 world record he's got. So he's an 8 to 11 shot, right? But I think he's 1 to 4 shot. Um, he's an absolute certainty in my book. Um, like, you know, as you said, if Farah wasn't in there, there's nothing else to beat him. 
It looks I, like I, Go I Beck. Think, I just think he'll win. Um, as you're saying, yeah, surname, surname double. Surname Altior. Surname Altior for the treble. Um, but no, Kipchoge, I just think 8 11 is, is way too big a price. I think his, his actual chance of winning this is a lot shorter. You know, there's only a couple of runners, like Kipsang hasn't looked himself. There's only a few runners that are going to get yeah. anywhere near him uh, and have a realistic chance of winning. As you said, they've at least three minutes to find on Kipchoge. Yeah, well, at his best, Farah's got a long way to find on him, you know. Mm. Um, it was He was on for world record pace last year in London, uh, Kipchoge was, and um, it was really hot. It was like 24 degrees, yeah. and he just got tired like, near the finish, but he had Farah well beaten. Um, so, yeah, I just, I just think he'll, he'll win. Um, long punch. Get your puncher's down money on him, quick. Yeah, don't do all your puncher's down money on him. Yeah. It's a bit late now for that. I know we've kind of said that, haven't we? Yeah. You on already? Yeah, pretty much. I don't know <laughs> what you were talking. <laughs> um, yeah, get on, lads. It'll win. Yeah, so that's our weekend preview. We will be back Monday with the Punchestown preview. Um, me and Tom will do a live one on Tuesday. Then myself and Dave will do one on Thursday, on Wednesday from the track, and Thursday, hopefully, from the hotel. Does Dave know this? He does now. <laughs> right, so thanks again, lads, for watching, and we'll see you again next week.